my father had been gone for years. So you didn't know him, wouldn't know anything about him. You picked him out just the way he would dress, what he would say to us, even our our nicknames. Did his mannerisms and his voice to a T. And there was no way to know any of that. And at the end of it, the reading, he said, you you were unsure about saying it. And you even said, really, you want me to say that? And he's like, yeah, tell him. And he said to me and my sisters, it's Miller time. He just broke out laughing because my father liked beer and he liked Miller. And we knew what that meant. I really believe she visited him. We just want you to know he knows how much you loved him. And everybody in the room, the jaw just Knowing dropped. exactly what like someone needs to hear. That she called you me when nobody she, really knew. It was incredible. And then I was like, oh my God. There's more after this life. This is Ripple Road. Hello, good morning, or is it good evening? Uh, here we are. I am your tour guide on this journey. I'm Scott. This is Ripple Road, episode 11. I'm in pretty good spirits today. I got some good chuckles out of that last episode, and I feel like, why don't I do more voices? That's more fun. There's so many different layers of me. I kind of go through all these cycles. I don't know what you call me. Like, um, there's personalities, like, in everybody. I kind of enjoy the comical personality. That's my go-to space for fun and enthusiasm. I like being there. Let's choose to be there, right? I feel like um, I'm a whole Scooby-Doo cast of characters, you know? And sometimes I, I have a bad week only to unmask it and find the real villain. And ah, it was old man thinking the whole time. And it, yeah, that's, uh, that's stinking thinking to you, you crazy kids. <laughs> like, this is what happens, you know? The old man stinking thinking gets in there again. And I flip-flop. But we do that, right? Because life is uncertain. You wake up Monday. Monday morning feeling great by Monday night, you're like, what the F was that day about? You know, it's not all under our control. The only thing that we can control is to try to take notice, practice, you know, the attitude of gratitude. Don't you love these catchy new age self helpy mantras? I love them. They're so much fun. Originally, we, we had set up time for um, us to talk. We, we talked for a little bit and you were like, I'm sorry, but I'm just not getting anything. <laughs> we can reschedule and we'll try again later. And it was like, we set it for like, a, I think like a month out. And I ended up traveling with my family that weekend. I was visiting my aunt at the time when, when we were going to be rescheduling. And she went out to the gym, so we had our call. And it became pretty clear that the reason that that all had happened is because you needed to wait until I was with her and could talk to her right after I had the reading. So my grandfather passed away two years ago. Um, and my aunt and he were very, very close. Yeah, I remember you saying it's an older man. He hasn't been gone that long, like not like 10 years, but maybe a year or two. He just keeps talking about his family and, and putting his arms around you guys. And that was something that, and, and giving a thumbs up. He always did a thumbs up in pictures, but it was things that would really resonate with her. You know, he, he brought up like, I wanted you to know that I was with you guys in Italy. They had just gone on a trip and they kept saying when they were in Italy that they felt him with them. Um, the second she came back from the gym, I like ran out to the car and was like, come inside. I really do think that was all meant to line up the way that it did. Maybe for me, digging through my layers and all these previous episodes, going through my emotional story can help you maybe take a look at your story. Just face it. Just look at it straight on. You know what's worse? Hiding it, burying it. The monster that's unseen is way worse than the monster that's seen. I'm telling you, you know, this has been like an emotional ride for me just going back and reliving all of this because it's made me pull some things out into the light and I'm like, man... I got to work on that. Oh, I see what I'm doing there. Ooh, that's where that anger comes from. Oh, okay. This is why I'm being the showman and the people pleaser. Ooh, that model's not sustainable. I'm going to I'm going to burn out doing that stuff. Like, ooh, yeah. It all makes sense to me now because, you know, look, my emotional journey was such that like I've landed in a place as an adult where I'm looking to make connections with people. That's like my like raison d'etre at this point is to be seen, to be understood and understand others. I mean like on a deep emotional level, man, I want to see you and I want you to see me. And I think that's the motivating force behind like why I, I'm being so raw and honest in this podcast is because 
for the years of me doing the mediumship full time, it got more and more into this corner of curation, right? We're all kind of curating an image. Make of it what you will. It, it, it is what it is. It's just being honest, you know? Um, so I hope I haven't offended anybody along this journey. I hope that you understand, um, you know, where I'm coming from. I have my own human perceptions about different personalities out there, some that I connect with well and have good chemistry with, others that I just don't. It doesn't mean one person's good and one person's bad. It's just harmonics, man. It's how we feel. And on a good day, I can connect with more people. And on a bad day, I can connect with less people. Because now, in order for me to connect, you really got to be in the bag with me, man. We got to be right there together, harmonizing, right? But on a good day, when I'm feeling enthusiastic about my unique voyage of life, and I'm kind of riding my high horse, and I'm, you know, the I'm the better Scooby-Doo character that day, you know? I'm running around like the comic, and I'm having a good time. Well, I can find those bridges. I can connect with more types of people when I'm there. But can I be there every day? I don't know, man. It's a struggle. I'm carting around all kinds of baggage. You know, when they say, let go of your past, I'm like, yeah, I already did that. <laughs> did you? Did you, though? I don't know. Like, there's still little remnants in there, you know? I'm working on it. Prior to you and I meeting, and I think we've known each other now for probably over 10 years, but, you know, in the 80s, the late 80s, when I was in graduate school, and I took a class on wellness and self-esteem. And the professor was from Israel. And we got into uh, really diving into guided visualizations and meditative practice. And he led us a lot of self-image stuff, leading us and guiding us in a way that we were able to arrive at a different view of ourselves um, as a result of that practice. So in this episode, I'm going to roll back around to this theme of old man stinking thinking and, and how that villain keeps taking over things and we got to constantly unmask him, you know? We got to all individually try to find that positive place and influence each other for the better, you know? Let's not get our attitudes so bad that we're putting out the flamethrower of negativity and everything that we touch we just want to burn. That's no good. Let's try and do better, you know? This sense of isolation and separation and aloneness that contributes to, I mean, this, this now is a new disease, loneliness. Talk about health epidemic. Loneliness and the effects it has on people and easing this sense of isolation and disconnection and increasing their sense of interconnectedness, that you, again, are an individual being unto yourself, but you're, you're not alone. And how you feel and how you think affects everyone else at some level that we're all connected. So here's some years we're getting into where all of this comes into sharp relief, man. I'm talking the, the camera lens really picks up on, on this dichotomy within me. Uh, I didn't know that at the time. I'm looking back on it in reflection, and it makes sense, you know? But uh, let's let's get into the weeds here. So I'm doing all these readings, right? I'm running around like a crazy person, doing more and more readings. And I'm carting around that old baggage, that old emotional insecurity, the, the people-pleasing thing, the image curation. That's all in there, right? So no one's putting that on me, right? I have all of this loving support, but because I have it in me, I'm going to kind of taint reality with the baggage that I'm carrying around, right? So, for example, like, I have this insecurity about um, being a provider, right? There's a little insecurity there, you know, where it's like, am I going to be a good provider? Like, Elise never brings this up. It's not even a thing. She doesn't care about this stuff. She loves me for me. Where am I getting this insecurity from then? It ain't coming from her. Guess what? There it is. Unmask the villain. It's Mr. Stinkin' Thinking again that whole time. I Ah, you pesky kids. Dang it, you know? Um, so what ends up happening when a reading doesn't work, I'm like, this isn't working as a business model, right? Like, I mean, it's my life's purpose. I find all this value and meaning, and I get all this uplifting feeling when I connect to other people. It feels like this is where I'm supposed to be in life. I'm supposed to be doing these psychic medium readings. This feels right to me on a, on a really deep spiritual level, right? So why isn't it working in the material world? Why am I like just barely scraping by, 
right? And all the insecurities that comes up with. One could say like, wow, it's really amazing that you're able to do that as a full-time job. That's crazy. I can't believe you're making that's That's amazing, you know? Or you could look at it and be like, I'm kind of a loser. You know what I mean? Like, oh, here's my boyfriend. He's a psychic medium. Oh, you know, he can't afford a pair of new sneakers. He can't afford a nicer car. You know, it's like, wow, what a drag. Who's saying that? Who's saying that? The thing that's screaming it at you is within your own mind. There it is. You know, unmask Mr. Stinkin' Thinkin'. So we got to get rid of that stuff because it's going to destroy me, you know, and it gets to a head. I know that now looking back on it. But at the time, here's how it all went down. One reading wouldn't work and it would drain me, right? I would push myself and push myself and I'd be drained. The next day, something happens in life. I'm carting around these bad attitudes now. I'm feeling lower. And now that reading doesn't work because I walked into the room and I didn't feel the dynamics. I didn't move the furniture. I just sat down and gave it a try because, I don't know, man, it seems like it'll work like this, I guess, you know? And like, now that one doesn't work. So before, when I first started doing it, I was showing up like with the feelers out, with that joyful, happy version of myself. And I could feel the room and be like, you know, uh oh, Peggy's got to leave. Sorry, Peggy, I'll read you on the phone later. You know, you got to go. And I'm like, all right, you got to move that chair over there. Ooh, there's that click. Oh, I'm going to read the heck out of you guys. Here we go. You know, that, that energy was missing because I was going into burnout, man. Burnout is like, you've heard the term, all right? But like medically, what's actually happening is all that stress compounds and it becomes like the new normal. Your body reacclimates to like hitting you with all these stress hormones, right? And it takes a physical toll, the bags under your eyes, the paleness, the, the lack of sleep, like you're getting lethargic. And so mentally, it's like you're starting to drag into your job. The thing that's giving you burnout, it compounds. Now you're not bringing the joy. Now you're starting to see more negative. It's like more people drinking wine. Son of a bitch, how do I fix this? I need to fix this. Like maybe I need to do readings in a way where I can be okay with alcohol. Maybe I should be okay in, in more public spaces. Look, if I could do bigger group readings, that could be the answer, right? Then, then it'll balance out the skeptics with the believers and, and, you know, maybe I'll read most of the people in the room and I can still pull out a great reading. I just have to find more group reading locations. What about this hotel? What about that? Maybe I shouldn't be so picky. This one's fine. Let's just do it. Let's just do it. And then, you know, ooh, bad things happen because I wasn't approaching it right. I wasn't putting out my feelers. I wasn't believing in myself. I didn't have that joyful confidence. Now I'm going in like, this should work, right? Let's just do it. And then it doesn't. And I'm like, something's wrong with me. There was somebody there that you weren't supposed to read. And you were like, I'm not getting a good reading tonight. Something's not right. Because you thought it was somebody else and you did a phone reading for that person. But then yeah. the next time you're like, yep, not feeling it again. <laughs> I would see you giving information to somebody and them just looking at you and looking at you, not really responding or validating or agreeing to it. But yet the, maybe the person that was with them, and I've seen this too, there's like, yeah, yeah, that's John. Oh, that sounds just like John. Don't you think that's John? The person's kind of just sitting there, and you're kind of going on and on and on because you don't know. You don't know the family history, or you don't you don't know how John passed or what's going on with John. They can't believe they can't believe it. And then I think, well, why did you come for the uh, reading? And then I had that personal experience. So we sit down for the reading, my friend and my two other friends. So we start, and you're like, something's wrong. Something's going on. And I'm like, oh, what? Because I was so looking forward to this. We waited for months to get you here. You tried, you tried, you got it. So then we took a break and we go outside. And you're talking and you're going on and on. You're like, I'm going to have to refund your money, you guys. I'm so sorry. I feel really bad. And then finally, my friend fesses up. She goes, I think it's me. She's like, well, I don't know. I'm scared of this. I'm afraid that is, is this of God or it's not of God. I don't know. She pretty much blocked the whole thing, kind of shut it down. Fear comes up for people and it it dictates 
it sometimes they allow it to dictate what's going to happen. It got to the point where I was actually like updating my graphic design portfolio and I started looking online for careers in graphic design again. After like 10 years of, from graduation, now I'm looking at graphic design jobs because this medium thing is not working because you can't control people. They're going to constantly hire you and be skeptical. They're going to constantly hire you and make the jokes about, oh, if that was real, you'd get me the lottery numbers. Ha <laughs> ha. How many times did I hear that joke, right? And I'll get like ornery about it. Like first you're like laughing. Like, I don't know, maybe you'll get them. Why? I never got them before. Like, hey, hey, if you're the winner, you're going to look at your check and it's going to be 50%. You're going to be like, where'd the other 50% go? And you look at me and ha ha, I remembered the numbers I told you. I played it too. <laughs> you know, we make fun of it. But after 10 years, you're like, the lottery. Yeah, yeah. Okay. The lottery. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, Jesus Christ. The lottery thing again. Oh, God, please stop saying it. Okay. And like, I'm uh, just getting burned out. I'm not having the great attitude anymore. It's like, I'm recognizing how it's not working. This is how the universe works. It's attraction of like attracts like, you know? The law of attraction is what I'm vibrating at, they'll bring me more of that, right? So if I'm like fixating on like, God, these people will never understand. I'll never get everybody to understand. I'm going to constantly run into problems. How do I fix this? I'm going to make more things on my website. I'll make another video. I'll do this, that, and the other. I got to take it to the next level. I got to... It's being motivated by stress, not joy. So I'm going to get more situations that are stressful. The earth is like, here you go. Law of attraction. Take more of this, right? And it's not that like everybody was bad. I have some really powerful guardian angels working with me that I feel blessed for. They will break that law of attraction. They'll be like, I know there's going to be some baddies here, but let's get them to hire him. And then they go out into the world and let's get this group right here. Hey, Megan. Hey, Heather. Let's get that group together. Okay, cool. And then I go over and I'm like, wow, you guys are so nice. Like, I'm so happy. Like, this reading was great. Thank you for that. Where'd that come from? I don't know, man. Divine providence? Serendipity? I don't... This is amazing. This is like... It's still sort of working. It's still sort of working, you know? But old man Mr. Stinkin' Thinkin' is doing his best to sabotage everything at this point, you know? So I'm really kind of struggling, to be honest with you. I don't like um, admitting it, but boy, there were some months getting into this time where it was like... 50% of my readings were not connecting. I mean, that's a lot of refund checks to send out. Now you're going into credit card debt. This does not look sustainable anymore, you know? And it's really getting right on the fence, man. I'm riding this delicate tightrope walk where, yeah, in my mind, it could go either way, you know? Well, I never ended up taking the graphic design job because I thought, man, they're going to do me like 40, 45 hours a week at $10 an hour. Do you guys see that I have a college degree? Like, what the heck? There's no jobs in that field that pay. There is none, you know? So uh, I, thank God for that. I um, Something within me just always said, soldier on. We'll get through this. Just keep going. I don't know where that voice came from, but I knew to listen to it, you know? Uh, so that's what I did. We are feeling... Beings. Feelings are our guidance system. They're big. I've seen you do that with other people. You've done it with me where you'll um, tap into something that's going on with me, either in my own thought process and in the stories that I, I'm telling myself about, in particular, relationships that are important to me or that are challenging at, a, at, at that particular time. And then the feelings associated with it. And just to give you an idea about how wonderful Elise has been through all of this, like, I can't say this enough, but let me just paint this picture for you really quick. Um, imagine, right, your spouse is me, okay? And I'm the psychic medium. And you got to tell all your friends at work. You got to tell people at the cocktail party. And you're invited over to make Christmas cookies and there's new people there. And it comes up, oh, you know, her, her boyfriend is a medium, like, okay, it's always going to be a thing. Now, you got to deal with that. that. Your significant other has this wacky job. Okay? So that's setting the stage, okay? Now, on top of that, imagine that your boyfriend's coming home and uh, he's moody. He's cranky again because those people, those people, ah, oh, that drive home is horrible. And, you know, you're sitting there listening to all the complaining. You're dealing with it, right? She sat with all of that. 
and she still loves me. She still stays next to me. She still supports me. If you can find somebody that's as good as her, you, you hit the jackpot, man. Because I, I don't know, man. I got lucky. I got lucky. I don't know. Like I said, there's law of attraction, but then there's those little guardian angels, man. Like, But these are the times where it's like really becoming stressful, man, on me. So I can't even imagine what she went through, but she's always been very loving and supportive through all of this. So that's kind of therapeutic in its own way, right? To have somebody who remains by your side through thick and thin. Wow. I mean, if that's not inspiring, I don't know what, you know? And that's what it's all about. How are we going to like slay those inner demons and find that passion within ourselves, find that joy and positivity and encouragement and be there for other people? That's what we need to do, you know? So I found that inspiration through Elise. She's helped me kind of stick with this <laughs> through the darkest times. I stuck with my passion because I had somebody there to hold my hand through it. Like... I don't know. I don't know if I could have done it without her. You know what I mean? But but here we are. So it's around this time that I get a phone call. You know, I'd get random phone calls like this all the time. Um, and I'm used to it. And I kind of enjoy it. You know, Elise will sometimes roll her eyes and be like, you were on the phone for an hour. Who was that? And I'm like, that was some random person I read a while back. She's like, hey, are you charging for this? It's like, no, you know, but it is what it is. She's used to it. I'm like a chatty Kathy. I like talking about this stuff. You know, I always enjoy it. I always come back around to it because it feels nice when your opinion is valued, you know? So when people call me looking for advice, I can't always answer the phone, but when the timing is right and everything's going good and we're friendly talking and yeah, man, that's fun. I enjoy that. So this guy calls me um, out of the blue. I had read him before in his family a, a few times over the years and he was looking for advice. Like he was getting into meditation. He was having visions. There was this thing about an archangel and all that. I'm like, wow, this is some powerful stuff you're dealing with. Um, but he was looking to kind of maybe get a mentorship going, a psychic development workshop, or just something to kind of continue his journey. He wanted to kind of like learn how to open up his own gifts. And I'm like, man, you're catching me in like some near burnout time right now. Like what I felt like I was time bankrupt. That's what I felt like. And if that's the story you're telling yourself, some little snitch is going to come along and take your time. And it's going to constantly happen, right? And that's what was going on. So I tell this guy, uh, look, I can't do this right now. I can't do this meditation thing. I'm dealing with some life issues, you know. Uh, so I referred him to go to that church that I went to. It's a spiritualist church in New Jersey. Um, and they were still running, you know. Now it's like an hour and 40 minute drive from Cape May County. So this guy, he was local. He had to drive up there like an hour and 40 minutes. Um, so he did and he enjoyed it. But eventually the months pass and he's like, we really need to start something down here. Can you meet for coffee? So part of me is like, maybe you should take your foot off the brake pedal a little bit and see where life takes you. Maybe there's a reason the universe is bringing you this opportunity. Go and have a freaking coffee with this guy. You know, like, all right, I'll do it. I'll see what this is about. Let's do it. Okay, fine. We'll, let's go and we'll have a coffee and brunch and we'll chit chat. So we're having our coffee outside at Avalon Coffee and Bagel. It's a little local coffee shop. And uh, I'm telling them, you know, like, look, I don't really have that much time to invest in this. Uh, but he just kept pushing. He's like, he really wants it. You know, he's like, we got to figure out a way to make this work for you because I want this and we got to make it work for you to make it worth your while. How are we going to do this? How can we set this up? I mean, at this point, maybe this is the thing I need to take it to the next level. So we talk and we're going to make it kind of like that spiritualist church. We want it to be like open to the public, like a congregation, like a like almost like a community outreach type of a thing, right? We're going to bring in people and have this space dedicated for like meditation and mediumship and just like a safe place to talk about psychic gifts and like, I don't know, like a catch-all, you know? Uh, but from an early point, we had decided like, we really do need to set the tone here. We don't want it to be like, open for everybody. He had specific goals in mind to open up psychically, and I only know a set amount of things, right? Like, I'm not going to sit there and open up uh, a Reiki certification program when that's not my attunement. That's not my bag. 
but I do mediumship and I do meditation. So there's my wheelhouse. Let's do that. Let's make it about that, right? And if anybody comes in the doors who wants to get more into like Wicca, uh, witchcraft, we can always like kind of slide them off to like other avenues. Like you guys can form an offshoot branch, right? So we come up with this idea for like a core Sunday meetup service, right? Every Sunday at 11, he happens to have a vacant office space that he used to rent out uh, to other businesses here and there, but it's just sitting there vacant with no use right now. So I'm like, perfect. We went over, we checked it out. I'm like, this will work, you know? We don't have any chairs though. I don't, but it's like, all right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to tell people the first couple weeks to just bring chairs, right? Like they can bring beach chairs, folding chairs, whatever. And um, we can sit around and do our meditation. But as we're passing around like a donation plate, maybe we can build up enough funds and eventually buy furniture. And let's just see how it goes. Yeah, you had reached out and said you wanted to try this. You wanted to start this. We brought our beach chairs. And for the first couple of weeks, we had to do that till we got real chairs. (laughs) I was there for the beach chairs. I missed the very first one. And it's crazy because I was so excited to go that first time. I had built up the nerve to go and forgot a beach chair and had to stop at um, Bed Bath & Beyond to buy a chair on the way in a while. (laughs) And then after that, I hit every single one of them. We're going to structure the whole service like... We'll open each one up with a guided visualization. That is like my strong suit, right? I'm good at that. I enjoy it. I want to show people, you know, how I got into it. Well, this is how I got into it. It worked for me. Maybe it'll work for you. I'm going to do this, right? So we're going to open up every service with a guided visualization. And then I want to like open the floor to discussion. I don't want to just move on to the next thing and encourage like a, a healing, open, positive, friendly vibe for people that are new to come out of their shell, to talk about their meditation experience. I think that's valuable, right? So let's create a space for that. Great. And then maybe we'll lead it into like, I don't know, maybe a talk. We'll do like a spiritual topic every new Sunday. We'll talk about some other thing, you know? I don't know, reincarnation, uh, the afterlife. I'll come up with topics, you know what I mean? And, uh, and here's the best part. I'm like, and then we can have snacks, Yeah, gotta have snacks. Hello, it'll be like social hour. We'll have coffee and cookies and cakes. Hell yeah, sign me up for that. So we got it, man. We're gonna do this service, right? So I'm thinking about it and here goes my graphic designer mind and my marketing. I'm like, we gotta get butts in the seats, man. We gotta get people in the door. All right, so I'm gonna advertise this on my Facebook. I'll send out an email blast. What are we calling this? Like spiritual meetup? I don't wanna say psychic development. I gotta have a cool tagline, like a cool sounding brand name. And it came to me like I was just sitting there watching TV one night and I'm like, something about peace. Like I like the symbol of the peace symbol. And I'm like, peace within, peace. And you know the term peace out, right? Like when, you, when you're when you out of a party, yo fellas, peace out, you know, like I'm out of here, right? But I like the play on the word, like peace out, like it's an outreach thing. Like we're reaching out in the community, we're bringing this inner peace and we're spreading it through the world. I love that, man, spreading peace in the world. So I'm gonna call it peace out. And we all agreed like this is a good name, so let's go with it, fine. Uh, so I came up with the logo and I made a website and I blasted it out all over social media. It's like this Sunday, it's going to be here. Bring a beach chair because we ain't got furniture, (laughs) you know. So we do the first one and it's a pretty good turnout. You know, it's like 10 or 12 people showed up. I I forget now. It was was a pretty good group, Um, you know, and I I ran the meditation and I did a little sermon, a little talk. uh, And then I was like, all right, well, let's do some messages. You know, I want to encourage new people that are kind of feeling out their own psychic abilities to like have a practice space to do readings. I mean, well, I'll start out on week one, you know, here's some messages, like here's here's how I do it. So I'm giving everybody messages, I'm doing the reading. It's like a, you know, kind of a bigger group, like 10 or 12 people is a big size for me, you know? And then we do the social hour and everybody likes it. And it's, I think it's gonna take off, you know? So the same people all came back next Sunday and they're bringing their friends and it's kind of growing Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. Where the journey took us individually, but then brought us together in the same space and and our experiences, I think just in general, not 
not one individual meditation, but all of them every time that sharing part was like, I think there were times where I thought I didn't get anything either until I was driving home. I was like, oh, shit, that's what that vision was about. Or that was that feeling or that was that whisper. Like afterwards, the residual effects of it were lasting. And and those effects of that meditation would last me till Wednesday or Thursday, depending on how my week was. People's vibes started changing. Like I started um, like having all kinds of like epiphanies and things. Um, and we all started to like read each other. It was interesting. Like we were getting feelings about like each other. And then um, it was also great to just consistently watch you do your work. That was something else you told me in the reading too. You're like, you're getting help. You're not supposed to talk about like getting help from spirit guides or angels, but I was just saying too many things to people privately in session. I'm like, where did that come from? Like, I thought of that, but I knew I was getting help. And I'm like, it made sense to me that, like, of course, like, I'm talking to people that are in struggle. Like, I'm a vessel, and why wouldn't I get help? Like, of course, like, thank you. Like, I should be getting help. You know, it was great to have a reading. It was great to have the things. But then to have, because you're in a group of like-minded people, for the most part, the majority of the people were there for the same thing. It was such a positive energy with the guided meditation in person as opposed to just listening to it on my phone. I feel like I got more out of it in a group setting. When you were talking about peace out and guiding a meditation and the shared um, energy, that after uh, some of those experiences, when we would um, talk and people would share their experience, it was so interesting because some of the symbols uh, that people saw in their mind's eye during that process whether it was a, a place, a location, um, a meadow, a field, or um, a person, or an animal, were shared. So people were like, oh, wow, really? You, saw, you, you just described some of the highlights of that experience, and I saw some of that stuff, too. So we were there together. But the thing is, I'm, like, running the whole thing, and I... I don't know, like, I kind of want other people to step up with their abilities. Like, maybe there could be, like, tarot card readers. Maybe we'll have that, you know? I played around with it. I'm not a very good tarot card reader, but, like, some people are attuned that way. Like, they look at the card, and they'll read, like, the message in the little tarot card book that comes with the deck. But then they'll kind of leap off from there and be like, I feel like it means this for you. And it's like, yeah, go with that feeling. Go with that feeling. Maybe that's your channel. That's your in, you know? I I'll create an opportunity for that because, you know, not everybody learns the same way. So we tried that for a while. Like, we'll do tarot card readings. We'll have a sign-up sheet. You know, I'm trying everything here, you know. But each service, you know, it would be like, I got to do another talk. And I started to enjoy that. I, I enjoyed the talk aspect of it. I didn't really know, like, that I was that good of a public speaker. Like, I would have throughout the week be like, maybe next week I'm going to talk about uh, visitation dreams and the difference. Yeah, yeah. And I'll have it all in my mind. And then Sunday would roll around. I walk in and I'm like, nope, not going to talk about visitation dreams. I'm just going to fly it with this um, kind of Buddhist versus Christian worldview of evil. This will be a cool topic, right? We're going to talk about this and, and we'll go into the light. And yeah, yeah, this is a cool topic, man. I'm going to do that. So I was kind of guided by, like, the energy of of the group and, and it became kind of a cool thing and then I would do the mediumship again well it got to the point week after week after week you know the group is growing sometimes it's 10 people sometimes it's 30 people sometimes it's 50 people you know this went on for months and it's like I'm doing this group reading now I mean like a large room group reading usually when I do those larger ticketed events like that I want to keep it smaller right like 25 30 people because it will drain me right? And if I charge enough per ticket, I can cover the rental hall and I can take off two or three days before the reading and two or three days after the reading because it is draining. I wouldn't want to put a private group at someone's home on my calendar the day after a 25 person reading because I don't know how that's going to go. I could need a couple of days to recharge, right? So it all balances out financially um, if I allow myself those days off. But now I'm doing this large group reading every single Sunday. I still need to, like, get paid. 
I'm not getting paid from this group. This is like a, a community thing. This is like a doors open donation basket type of thing. All the money is going to like try to keep the doors open. I mean, look, this guy could have rented it out to another company and made a hell of a lot more money, right? He's barely scraping by. He's probably, you know, digging through his own savings to just keep the lights on and pay the electrical bill because people are dropping a couple of bucks in the donation plate, maybe five or $10. So it becomes like a thing. How many of the people are coming in the door as the word is spreading and people are talking to their friends and family about it? How many people are coming in the door for the free mediumship readings? where they'll drop a couple bucks on the plate. And how many are coming for that sense of spiritual community, mediumship development, meditation, you know, personal spiritual growth? It's a mixed crowd now, you know? So it's getting to the point where I'm like, do I do readings every week? I got to have other people stepping it up. I got to, you know? So now I'm like, all right, if not a lot of people are stepping it up to try and practice read, maybe people can get into it by doing a guided visualization. Other people can lead the meditation. Other people can give the sermon. Other people can can maybe eventually step into these roles where it's not all on my shoulders, right? Because mind you, like I said in the beginning, I'm going through near burnout. I'm on that tightrope wire and my mind is like frazzled. It's like now I'm taking on this whole extra congregation where I'm like the pastor of this service. I'm getting phone calls. Hey, can I do the meditation next week? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Okay, uh, I need somebody else to do the talk then. Do you want to do the talk now? All right, let me call this person. Let me call that person. And now I'm like kind of heading this congregation on top of me like losing some traction on my paid weekly readings that, that are kind of failing more and more. I'm getting stretched thin at this point, right? So I'm trying to get this thing off the ground. I'm trying to like put as much of my energy into it as I can. I think looking back on it, I wrongly assumed that like I have to give everything to grow this congregation, to get money in that collection plate where this is going to sustain itself, right? So we got to figure out a way to grow this congregation and get it to a place where it's going to thrive and run on its own, you know? So at this point, I feel like it's on my shoulders. Like, I'm the guy that's got to, I don't know, like incentivize more people coming. You got to give those messages. You got to do really good meditations. You got to give amazing, insightful spiritual talks. This whole thing went on for months and months and months. There was like regulars, right, that were forming their own little cliques. And I remember at one point, I'm thinking about like the way the spiritualist church used to be that I went there. And there were these little cliques down in the basement, you know, some of them were open and friendly and other ones were kind of more hostile to newcomers. And it's like, politics over the course of decades. How many people come into the congregation looking for mediumship? How many come in because of the meditation? How many just like the spiritual, you know, aspect of it and the coffee and cakes afterwards and they they enjoy that community? There's all these different people with all kinds of views of what, you know, their spiritual meetup should be, right? Someone will be like, well, I really like getting into the more far out stuff and past life regression. Someone else will be like, well, I kind of want to keep it more churchy and like religious feeling. Someone else will be like, you know, I want to go into the hands-on healing thing. And where can we get into more Reiki type stuff? And it's like, okay, I'm trying to hold all this together as it's growing. And I'm seeing similar things happening that happened in the church in Westville. So I'm like, guys, we can't be clicky. We have to like say hi to everybody that walks in the door, welcome newcomers. And I used to do that. Like after the service, I'd see a new face and I'd walk down the aisles and be like, hey, how's it going? I'm Scott. What kept me coming back and really listening to you was your ability to show, not only do, but show that your intentions were to help not to just get paid. And you always have backed that up with uh, if you didn't feel you did correctly or that you did it the way that was to your standards, that you've always, I've every time I've heard you anyway, have offered to refund money because you can tell you really do care. On the flip side, yes, you need to earn a living and you do a really good job with this and I think you're owed that. I really do. I think you earn what you're out there for. And I do think you deserve more for it. And nothing that is that genuine, in my opinion, can thrive in a situation when the intentions of what you're setting out to do are not the original truthful intentions. It also then would take away your ability to connect with people 
I wouldn't be surprised that if then you're having trouble reading people or you can't really see clearly or it's just too much and it's bogging you down because the pure intention was gone. So I ended up feeling like it's on my shoulders to like really encourage this thing to be like this vision of what I thought it could be. But you know what, though? It takes somebody who's got a personality skill set that I kind of don't have, you know? I am very, like, passive. I'm very, like, uh, wishy-washy, procrastinator, daydreamer, space cadet, like, philosophical, spiritual, head in the clouds. That's what makes it possible for me to do these mediumship readings so well. But that's not a very good skill set when it comes to, like, running a spiritual organization, right? Making people happy and playing politics here. How do I, like, encourage everybody to be supportive, to make everyone feel like they're being heard, but also maintain course, right? Not get steered off in any weird directions. Now, the thing that's going on in these services that I really enjoyed the most was this kind of um, presence energy. I don't know, root life force energy. This vibe would take over the space that's like influenced by the thoughts and intentions and emotions and spiritual vibes of everybody sitting in there. So once we're all on the same page going through this guided visualization, I feel like it affected people. It affected me. Like even as I'm leading it, I can feel the vibe of the room changing, you know? And I used to enjoy that energy doing the mediumship readings at the end of every service was really taking a toll on me. It was starting to get more and more difficult, just like my regular in-home, you know, private readings were starting to tank. Now this mediumship at the service is starting to tank. There were times I'd get up and I'd just be like, I don't know, guys, I'm really not feeling it today. I'm sorry. And to be honest, I'm like on the verge of emotional collapse at this point, but I'm trying to hide it, you know? You went to a really dark place place internally but tried not to let that shine through externally but you you didn't hide it well you you wore it all over your face you looked unhealthy you looked unwell on a spiritual level not not humanly level like you could just see at the core of you that there was a change almost like a, a force of you being there like I, I feel forced being here and this isn't this isn't healthy for me this isn't healthy for anyone but in the sense, too, that you didn't have to say no or couldn't say no. Um, that one time you had a group reading, when you tried to do the reading there, I, the energy was off, you were off, you weren't comfortable, and you're just like, nope, I'm refunding everybody's money, I'm done. Even when I did a few readings after the meditation and stuff, it was draining. I came home exhausted. All I wanted to do was take a nap. I, and and then some of the stuff I couldn't shake, like the energy I couldn't shake, not the actual words or images or things like that. It was just the energy. was It was just draining. And I'm like, how the hell does he do this? So in order to keep it going, uh, we eventually had to advertise it on meetup.com. I don't know if you're familiar with this website, but it's like a website where people can be like fellow dog walkers of Central Park, New York or something, right? And they come up with a, a little group and they can meet up and do their dog walking. Or like, we love uh, cheese and wine enthusiasts, you know? Well, there's meetup for meditation, right? So I'm like... Man, this is knocking on the door of trouble. I knew it right away. And I, I said that to people. I was like, dude, I don't know about this meetup thing. You're asking for all the kinds of freaks and weirdos, man. And again, like, I don't want to come off sound and judgy, but I'm going to be honest with you. I have a vibration that I'm good at, right? The mediumship, the meditation. There's other people that hear that and assume that, like, I'm part of their thing, and then you talk to them and you're like, wow, man, you're really, you're really into some far out stuff. Like that's, that's going to kind of rub people the wrong way. You're, you're kind of, um, there's people out there who are a little more aggressive in their spiritual views and they vibe in a different way. I'm creating like this energy of friendly, open acceptance and somebody else wants to come in and dominate, right? They want to be like, no, it's this way. This is how spirituality is, you know, because there's different personalities in the world, right? So how do you deal with those? 
those newcomers coming in the door as I'm starting to like squirrel away. You know, even my mediumship is is starting to tank and people can see it in my face. Now newcomers are coming in and I'm like, I need other people to step it up. I have to start kind of uh, downstepping my responsibilities here. I really need to start focusing on my life because things are falling apart with my mediumship business. This isn't working. I'm, I'm stretched too thin, guys. So I need new people like to come in the doors and, and kind of help out and step it up. And the new people that we're getting from this meetup site and from other forms of advertising at this point are like... Uh, they're just not the right kind of fit, man. They're, they're looking for something, too. I can't judge them. They're looking for something. But it's not the thing that I offer. So, for example, you know, I'm not calling out anybody names because I don't want to I don't want to sound like I'm picking on anybody here. But just to give you guys an example, uh, there was one woman that came in who right off the bat was like, I am a medium. I channel spirit. I can help out. And I'm like, wow, wonderful. You know, the whole time I'm talking to her, I got to tell you. I got a funky vibe. It's one of those things where I had to turn my body away from her because I could feel like, ooh, like a drain. Like there's something that doesn't feel good to me. It's it's just harmonics, you know. It, it didn't resonate with me very well, and I had to walk away from her, you know. Even at the, at the uh, social hour, I just had to like walk away from her, you know. Okay, thanks for the conversation. But, you know, somebody else was like, oh, did you hear she's a medium? I'm like, yeah, yeah, you guys want to set that up? You know, you can give her a time slot. I really got to step away from this, though, you know. Um, and I, I was like, all right. Let me call her up and just kind of like validate what she's about because I, I feel like my uh, congregation is like my flock, you know, and I'm the shepherd. I don't want to expose them to something that I myself felt like uncomfortable with, you know. So I'm like, all right, I'll call this woman and I'm telling her like on the phone, like, listen, you know, if you're a medium, cool, get up there and do your thing. You know, I really need to step away. Like, um, you know, it's not it's not something that I can maintain. And she heard all of that. And I don't know why she kind of took it to mean like, well, this is this is the Scott Henry show and he's got a big ego and he's trying to be like the man. Well, I'm going to come in here and show you what I can do. And that's that weirdness that I was picking up because sure enough, I went there when she did her uh, mediumship, her channeling, and it was very bizarre. And a lot of people in the congregation approached me even after the service and throughout the week, they called me on my personal phone um, to tell me that if she's going to be back, I'm, I'm not coming again because it was bad. It was like heavy energy in the room. People felt sick. They were woozy. It was not good. And I can't keep doing this. I can, I'm looking desperately for other people to step it up. But like, there's nobody else out there with my vibe, I guess. It's just not enough people doing it the way that I'm doing it. And that makes me special in some way. And the fear in me, the Mr. Stinkin' Thinkin', would take that thought and go, oh, you think you're special, huh? Well, people are going to hear that and think you're big-headed. You don't want people out there thinking you're top dog, you know? That's nasty. You don't want to come off as selfish. But then the other part of me is like, look... When you're being honest with yourself and you're in the flow of love and joy, it's okay to say that you're special. What's wrong with that, right? But I'm struggling with it at this moment, right? Well, towards the end, um, I would say in the last three visits I was there, I personally would get not a good feeling around certain people that I hadn't, like they were newer at the end. I didn't really get to know them. I think I, was, I maybe spoke with the one of them one time. Um, but I just didn't get a good vibe. Like, I actually felt sick to my stomach when I talked to him, which is, it felt, sounds horrible. And I felt horrible because I was like, oh, gosh, you know, I, here I am, like, somehow being totally judgmental in a way. And I I, I felt bad about it. But I, I literally got a bad vibe. So I kind of stayed away. And it was about that same time you hadn't been there for, I think, like, two weekends. And I, I honestly, in my mind, all I thought was, well, I'm not surprised you need a break. You're obviously more sensitive than me, and I was feeling something. And if I was feeling that way, I could only imagine what you were taking in. So I just hoped for the best. It was really sad when it didn't work out and we couldn't hold it anymore, but I completely understood it. if it just doesn't feel right, then it's just not right. I have to be done with this group for a while. I need to, like, take a break. I really need to focus on myself, my life, and my goals personally. 
this is too much for me. So we're going to set up like an executive board, like a, they can vote on things together. You know, they can kind of set the schedule for who's doing the meditation and the talk and, and, and just kind of keep it going. Uh, so we have the meeting. And I'm like, here's how it's going to work, guys. Here's here's the people you need to watch out for. Here's all the politics that's going on uh, in our congregation right now. And I just spilled my guts on everything, man. It all came flowing out of me, you know. Uh, thank God Elise was by my side this whole time. She was extremely supportive. And, you know, she could hear me on the phone and she's like, maybe you shouldn't have said that about that person. I'm like, I know you're right. She's like, you know, you just need to be done. It's, it's taking you into a dark place. You're venting and it's not nice. It's, it's coming across as catty, you know? And I'm like, you're right. You're right. Isn't that, <laughs> this is what is great about a loving partner. They can tell you the truth in a way that's like both a little bit harsh, but not harsh enough that you like get arguing with them and fighting them. It's right on that fence where you're like, mm, that's a hard pill to swallow. But and maybe you want to kind of lash out in that moment and you think about it. and You're like, you're right. You're right. Ah, uh, you know, but that's what's great about having somebody on the same page as you. They can help you get out of your own head, that you can't sustain this. It's not healthy. It's taking you into a dark place. You're like, readings are all failing. You're not making any money. Not that that matters to her, but she knows it matters to me. And, um, you know, it's just trying to help me navigate all of this. So I'm like, I, you're right. I got to step away. You know, she loved it. She, she loved the group. She loved going. She was sad to see it over, but she knew that it was time, you know, and she helped me make that decision that it was like, you're right. I do have to step away. I mean, I already knew it myself, but like here in her side, I'm like, man, you're so right. Like she could see that it was really destroying me, you know, and the other people in the congregation, once I finally stepped away, there was some like sore feelings, man. People were hurt. They thought we were all friends and I just turned my back on everybody. I went into a place where I threw literally everyone in my life into one basket. Everyone needs to go in this basket and get away from me for a while because I can't anymore. I was so stretched thin. The healing that came that people didn't even know they needed to be healed from that you provided that vehicle for them. And I'm not talking about the reading. I'm talking about the meditation and, and being able to process that with you. And because there were times where I shared after meditation, I'm like, yes, God, this is what I got. And I'm thinking it means one thing. You're like, no, this is what that means. And I'm like, oh, shit, that makes perfect sense. And that feels good. And, and again, it got me through my week. And it, it was so helpful. I saw you distancing yourself from from the group, and I think I was hurt at one point even by that because I thought our connection was different, but I think I was just lumped into all of that. And I know, you know, looking back, it wasn't personal, but while I was going through it, it's like, oh, okay, well, now I'm hurt by that. The psychic drain was powerful, man. I, I needed to learn that the hard way, set boundaries, set personal boundaries. So, you know, I think like, wow, I had a lot to offer people, you know, to create this amazing space to like um, spiritually grow and, and come together. But um, I just don't have the skill set to be both the spiritual, you know, moderator or the, the, the meditation guru, and then also the, the kind of pastor doing the politics, like keeping the congregation thriving, scheduling things, set up things, phone calls with people. It's too much for me. You know, I can't, I can't keep that up. And, uh, it sucked. I went through like a period of really kind of darkness there, you know? I didn't know what to make of it. I don't have all the answers, you know. Uh, I was like really struggling to figure myself out at that moment. But uh, that's where it went to. Uh, if any of you out there are listening and were like, you hired me and our reading did not work out and maybe I had like a stinky attitude, you know, Mr. Stinkin' Thinkin' was out there uh, at the, the steering wheel of my brain and was really controlling my behavior. Um, I hope I didn't come off too harsh. I hope I didn't offend too many people, but I know that I did. I know that I came off as a jerk a couple of times to people that regularly hired me, you know. I'd show up for their fifth or sixth reading in 10 years, and uh, I'd be like, oh my God, you guys, you're doing this? Ah, oh, you invited that person? I told you in private, never invite that person again. Ah, oh, 
you guys, you're trying to record the reading? I told you last time that your mother and spirit doesn't like to record the reading. No, you never told us that because oh, you don't listen. Like some of the nicest people I was getting real crabby with, you know? That's no good, man. It's like imploding, you know? Uh, it was too much, man. I needed to step away. So that gets back to that balance, man. Like what ignites your passions in life? What brings you back to center? What gives you that enthusiasm for your journey? You go through life, life hands you situations, it brings out the worst in you, it brings out the best in you, it makes you laugh, it makes you angry. All these different emotions are running through you as you're going through life. It's like different aspects of your own personality, different mechanisms that you've developed to cope with different situations in life. Well, I was not laughing amicable Scott. I was like, I've got to figure this out. You know, no one's ever going to like hire me that understands it. You know, and then it's like you get in there with the Scooby-Doo mystery, unmask who it is, and aha, it's Mr. Stinkin' Thinking again. Ah, man, the villain is always in there. We just have to be quicker at unmasking him and be like, aha, Mr. Stinkin' Thinking, you need to stop. You got to stop taking over, and I'm going to get back to, like, the little things that make me happy, right? Let's just dial it back to those essentials and kind of start over at square one, right? Let's just build on the essential joy again and see where that takes me. And that feeling like I'm excited to be alive. Yeah, that's where I need to be. So let's just clear away all the clutter and get back to that place. There's little steps you can take to do that, you know? You can take steps right now to do the things that make you happy, right? Choose to do those things. It's not selfish, guys. It's not. It's self-care. We need to work on self-care. And as long as we're connected to the world um, through our phones, through social media, through the internet, through all this image curation, look at me, look at me, look at me, this kind of putting out the most positive image of yourself, it's going to create the flip side, right? There's yin and yang. You're going to fixate on the positive, then you're going to bury the negative. And the negative's in there, and it's going to eat you up. So I would say, forget about this image curation. Forget about trying to maintain this positive view of yourself. Just be real. Just be real with yourself. Because the darkness isn't so dark if you bring it out into the light. You know what I mean? Look at it for what it is. But, but the thing that you don't want to talk about, that you're hiding and burying, that monster is always worse. You know what I mean? So my advice is to just be more authentic. That's what I'm trying to do in this podcast. Be more real. Talk about things that are going on with you because when you bring them out into a conversation, you'll find that the right people, your spouse, your family, heck, your children, anybody, just have a conversation with people. You'll find that most people react to your vulnerability and your efforts to be authentic and real with love and support, right? And if they don't, you got to throw them overboard because they're dealing with their own thing. See you later. Ha have fun on your life raft because I don't want you sinking me too, you know. That's it. Because the real people are going to appreciate that you're being real, you know. And that's what it comes down to. You got to be real with yourself. That's it, you know. Uh, I'm on that journey still. So uh, anyway, so that brings us to the end of this episode. Uh, the journey continues. Uh, I think I may have one more left in me after this. What have we learned? I don't know. What have you learned? I learned to be more real. I learned to be more authentic um, because it sits better with me and it makes it so that that little voice of joy and enthusiasm is within reach now. It's, it's not so much that the masked villain is in there with the controls of my brain in his hands and, and uh, the stinking thinking has control. Just being real, just uh, kind of admitting to myself, like, this is me, this is my journey. It's brought me closer into a sense of confidence, and I can call it like I see it, you know? Maybe going into people's homes to do readings, maybe that's not a sustainable business model. Maybe I don't go back to that. I don't know what the future holds. I'm not sure where it goes, but I know that the journey of being more authentic is a positive journey to be on. You know, the group that we participate in talked about maybe doing more groups. Uh, we don't, you know, who knows what's going to happen. Hopefully in the future that you're going to be able to do more public group readings because those are very informative to people. 
even if someone doesn't get a reading, um, their, their healings happen in those readings for other people because of what they witness um, or experience because they're present. Um, and, you know, you ha- I know you have your um, public page on Facebook, and I tell people to check that because often you'll post something that's full of wisdom and knowledge that's self-empowering and, and loving. And you can check me out at scottedwardhenry.com or follow me on Facebook or Instagram at scottedwardhenry. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe to this podcast if you want notifications for future episodes. And thank you again for listening. Have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful evening. Have a great week and be cool. Really? You want me to say that? And he's like, yeah, tell him. And he said to me and my sisters, it's Miller time. Thank you.